Hello, I'm Apoorva Kaluru from the Australian Institute of International Affairs. Today I'm joined by Associate Professor Brendan Taylor from the Australian National University. We're at the uh, EPSA World Congress in Brisbane. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the book that you recently <laughs> published, at, um, and it's called The Four Flashpoints, How Asia Goes to War. <laughs> so Brendan, maybe we could start talking about you know, what the book is about, how you um, decided to embark on this particular book, and why, and maybe perhaps the key takeaways mm -hmm. from the book. Yeah. Well, the book's um, it's a, a bit of a gloomy topic. It's, um, it's basically, it's, its main argument is that Asia's in a, at a very dangerous moment um, at, at this time. It's, uh, it's arguing that Asia's in the, the throes of, of what I call a, a crisis slide, a period where there's been a series of strategic crises uh, happening in Asia on the Korean Peninsula, over the East China Sea, in the East China Sea, and perhaps um, at the moment uh, over Taiwan. Uh, and it argues that those crises are, are having a cumulative effect and that there's actually a much higher chance of major power war uh, in Asia at the moment than, than most people presume. Right, and what was, um, what was sort of the impetus to write this mm -hmm. book? Well, I suppose I wanted to try and tackle a, a really big um, research question, and I kind of looked around and thought, what's the, one of the big you know, research questions in our, in our field at, at the moment? And, and, and the field is, you know, um, one of those questions is, um, you know, about the prospects for war and peace in, in Asia at, at the moment. And um, I come from a discipline called strategic studies, and one of the, the things I'm supposed to do as part of my job is to kind of look ahead out, out into the future and, and try and anticipate where the big threats and and challenges are coming from and, and uh, hopefully try and do some good to try and um, avoid those, those threats and challenges. So this book was really uh, a very you know, small effort on, on my part to, or to play, play a small part in, in trying to address what I see as a big, uh, very big challenge uh, coming in the, in the years and decades ahead. Absolutely. So, I mean, if uh, you think that this is a big strategic challenge, why do you think it's so being so widely ignored or um, not discussed as prevalently in the in the sphere? Yes. Yeah. I think there's been a real sense of complacency has has, has crept in. Um, I think that there's a an assumption that you know we've had a number of these crises now, and the, the crisis on the Korean Peninsula over the the last year, which is, is part of a, a much longer uh, protracted, um, you know, very difficult problem over the, over North Korea's nuclear. Uh, weapons, but I think there's there's kind of been a complacency has crept in that you know we've had these these crises and, and we've managed to kind of find out find our way out of them. But I think that you know luck has played a big part in, in that. You know serendipity has, has played a part as to why those crises haven't escalated. And I think that if you look back over history, often there's been major power wars that broken out. You know the the First World War and the Second World War are two very good examples of that, where there has been a, a sense of complacency before them, and that complacency has actually uh, resulted or been one of the major factors in, in leading to a major power conflagration. So, I mean, I certainly don't want a war to happen in Asia at the moment. I don't think anybody um, does. So um, one of the, the things that I hope this book will achieve is to try and um, waken up policymakers a, a little bit to, to the, um, out of that sense of, of complacency that, that war, major power war could potentially break out in this part of the world. Right, absolutely. And do you think that perhaps another reason for ignoring this is because it hasn't affected us so directly, mm -hmm. affected us in Australia and it affected Americans, these um, points of Western academia, and so that means that we can you know, ignore it a little bit more or... Yes, yeah. yes, certainly, and I think one, you know, Australia's been very, very fortunate. We're, you know, often described as being the lucky country, and I think one of the reasons we've been so lucky is because our, um, you know, we are, have been historically such a remote country, you know, geographically remote. We've tended to be away, you know, from, you know, when, when major wars have broken out in places like, uh, like Europe, we've, we've been far away from those. I mean, obviously, they've impacted upon us and the lives have been, that have been lost of of some of the, the soldiers that have been sent to those conflicts, but by and large we've been insulated by, by the distance that, that we've um, had from them. But I think that you know, one of the dangers for Australia at the moment is as these tensions are, are emerging in a, in a region that's much closer um, to us, that the kind of the big powers in the international system are, are starting to, uh, to rub up against each other in, in much closer proximity to us than we've had in the past. And so I think that you know, in the stability of our part of the world is, uh, is under challenge, and if, um, if we do uh, move into a period where there is the outbreak of major power conflict that will that will really um, impact upon us very very gravely. So it's one of the you know the, another one of the main reasons why writing this book was was something that I thought was important to do. Right, absolutely. So the book is entitled "The Four Flashpoints: How Asia Goes to War." So can you just talk to us a little bit about what these four flashpoints are, mm -hmm. and perhaps how you came to these 
four themes or four points mm -hmm. as the most like important or central focus of the book? Yes, no, it's a great question. And the, the, the four flashpoints I looked at were the, the kind of the four traditional East Asian flashpoints that have been looked at for uh, you know decades now: the Korean Peninsula, um, Taiwan, the East China Sea, and the South China Sea. But what I, I try and do in the book that's uh, a little different than, than other books is um, I also look not only at these uh, flashpoints individually, but I also look at the uh, the connections between them. And if we look back over the, the history of these, these flashpoints, you know, many of them have got a very long history in some cases. It goes back hundreds of years. But if we look at the period immediately after the Second World War, um, the San Francisco Peace Treaty that um, kind of brought an end to that, that war and, and, and saw the Allied powers make peace with, with Japan, it left a number of these flashpoints, in fact, all of these flashpoints unresolved. And so I argue that there is a historical connection uh, between them, that the, there was always the makings of a crisis slide there or conditions conducive to a crisis slide, and now we're beginning to see that, that crisis slide um, actually eventuate in, um, in Asia. So that's why I see um, this region at the moment uh, facing a, a, a very dangerous period ahead. Right, so almost like a boiling point of... Yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Well, that was really interesting. Thank you so much for joining us today, Brendan, and, uh, and for taking the time to interview with us. Yes. Um, you can access more interviews from the IFSA World Congress at www.internationalaffairs.org.au.